In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to turn this into this. We are Alex and Elena, a couple in our mid-20s working towards financial independence and self-sustainability. Follow our journey as we grow, build, fix, and learn the skills we need to get us there. If you tuned in for the last video where I rebuilt the gearbox in this thing, you know that I've already put some serious work into this little puppy. But in order to make it a really good functioning tiller again, it definitely needs some new tines. When Elena and I picked this thing up, we noticed that two of the tines were missing. No problem, just order two more tines. Except there is a problem. Here is a new tine versus an old tine. Sweet Mother McCrieger, there is a three inch difference between the new and old tine. So clearly this thing has seen some major use in its day. But Alex, why would you wanna make your own tiller blades? Good question, I'll tell you why. $7 per blade seems okay if you're just buying two blades. If you're buying 16 blades, $112 for blades for an old tiller doesn't give you the same warm fuzzy. It just so happens that last summer I did some structural work on this barn that I'm standing in. And as part of that, I bought a lot of 3 16 inch steel plate, which coincidentally is the same thickness as these blades. So what I'm gonna do is use my leftover plate, cut it up and make it into tiller blades. Now the tool you need to cut through 3 16 inch steel plate like it was butter is either an oxyacetylene torch or a plasma cutter. Guess who has neither? But what I do have is this. Now luckily I have a new blade to guide as a template. I basically just laid it on here, rolled it out so I knew my flat pattern length, and then marked the line all the way down. Well, there you have it folks, 14 blanks, all cut on the same blade, basically continuously with this Sawzall, which I just got for Christmas, and I am extremely impressed with. This is the first trial I've really put it through. This flexible battery pretty much did the whole thing, and it's still got two bars left. Pretty amazing tool. The next step into mimicking this part is drilling a couple half inch holes. That's one down. That's a pretty painstaking process. And I really wish I had a good metal drill press. I am actually considering pausing this project until I can go find a good used metal drill press. I have a little wood one bench top drill press. The lowest speed it can go is 760 RPM, which is like way too fast for this application. So I think I might go buy a drill press. As I was drilling, I was having horrible flashback memories of this project. I had most of these steel plates fabricated where they, the holes were punched out, but a few of them I did actually have to hand drill manually, and it was just miserable. I withheld my temptation to buy a drill press and just asked my neighbor Dale instead to use his. I started to taper the ends of the blades and sharpen them to match the purchased blades, but after a while, it was just getting to be too much work and I decided they'd be just fine as they were. It only took about two blades to realize that hammering was not the most effective way to bend these plates, but rather using a large channel lock pliers to bend them after they've been heated. Fourteen beautiful pieces of bent 3 16 steel. Gotta get the old blades off. Without a good impact gun, this job is almost impossible. That actually went much smoother than I thought for once. The threads on these bolts are almost totally clean. They were sort of sealed inside.
Well, there they are assembled hand tight. Not so bad. Time to tighten the bolts up and then we can put the tiller back together. moment of truth we got to till up a piece of Elena's garden to plant some watermelon in so it's the perfect time to break the new blades in Thanks for watching. I hope you got something out of this video. If you liked it, thumbs up, subscribe, and you can also follow us on Facebook or Instagram at Mason Dixon Acres.